2020 was a pretty rough year. However, as bad as it was, it could have been worse. On November 13th, a house-sized asteroid labeled 2020 VT4 flew just 240 miles above Earth, and we didn't notice until after it had happened. The flyby was so close that had it been just a few seconds later, the story might have been a little different. Obviously, 2020 VT4 actually hitting Earth and doing some damage requires a lot of what-ifs. More than likely, if it entered our atmosphere on a direct course for a major city, it would just have burnt up in the atmosphere and would have really been no cause for alarm. However, this is not always the case. In 1908, an incredibly large explosion over the Tunguska River in Russia flattened 80 million trees over an area of 830 square miles. Three people were estimated to be killed and a few buildings were destroyed by the blast. The explosion was caused by an asteroid that had disintegrated and exploded in the atmosphere, causing immense devastation without even touching the ground. The Tunguska event opened the doors for a discussion about asteroids and asteroid avoidance systems. Technology at the time could not detect and eliminate space threats, but scientists nevertheless tried, dreading the idea of what could have happened had this been a city. We wouldn't really know until about over a hundred years later in 2013 when, still in Russia, an asteroid smaller than the Tunguska event exploded in the atmosphere above Chelyabinsk. The explosion shattered glass, caused some structural damage, and injured around 1,200 people. Luckily, no one was reported to be killed. We as humans have been incredibly lucky when it comes to dodging asteroids, and the ones we don't dodge somehow manage to be too small to cause any real damage. However, that does not stop scientists from trying to predict and safeguard our planet from these cosmic threats. Scientists around the world track these asteroids, also called near-Earth objects, and they especially track the ones that, you know, could kill all of us. Problem is though, there's a lot of them, and I mean a, a lot of near-Earth objects. So though we can track a lot of them, we still miss some. In mid-2019, a 400-foot wide asteroid snuck up on scientists, and it made a rather close approach to Earth, a lot closer than even our moon. Had this asteroid impacted Earth, it would have caused massive amounts of damage. It wouldn't wipe us all out, but if it had hit a city, there would be nothing left. The asteroid, labeled 2019 OK, probably in reference to the fact that it didn't destroy 2019, and it was in fact OK, was a sobering reminder, even for top scientists, of the hidden dangers lurking within our dark solar neighborhood. However, as big as it was, it wouldn't have destroyed all life on Earth. According to scientists, you would need an asteroid 60 miles in diameter to destroy everything. But smaller ones can still do a lot of damage. The asteroid that wrecked the dinosaurs is estimated to have been 5 to 10 miles in diameter. But you really only need an asteroid half a mile in diameter to cause damage on a global scale. If a half mile sized asteroid hit, let's say, England, it would be toast, England would be gone. Brexit would no longer be an issue, and the Americans would probably label the asteroid 1776-2. The destruction would throw a lot of dirt, ash, and debris into the atmosphere, blocking out the sun, and this would create a sort of nuclear winter. This would be devastating for crops and a lot of wildlife, but humans are rather resilient, so we'd probably be fine. But life as we knew it would be over. 
This actually almost happened in 1918, when an asteroid now labeled 2011 MD5 zoomed by Earth closer than our moon. It was a mile in diameter, and at one point it blocked out the sun. Had it collided with Earth, it would have done some unspeakable damage, and since in 1918 people were dealing with the Spanish flu, it would have been an apocalypse with seemingly biblical implications. A disaster like an asteroid hitting Earth could happen at any moment, but I wouldn't worry about it. Depending on who you ask, the majority of near-Earth objects that could hurt us have been identified, so you can probably rest easy, as the likelihood of humanity being obliterated out of nowhere by an asteroid is pretty low. And even if it wasn't, we could probably send Bruce Willis up there to take care of it for us, right? So, asteroids. Not that big of a deal. Uh, hopefully. But even so, they're not the only enemy out there waiting to take us out. If you look at the sun, well, don't look directly at the sun, but if you're aware of the sun, you're probably thankful of the warmth it gives and the light it provides. The sun is our friend, and like most friends, they're enjoyed in moderation. However, as the sun is our friend, the sun is also our enemy. You might not be aware of this, but the sun is constantly berating the earth with particles in a phenomenon called solar wind. Think of it like a sandstorm, but instead of air and sand, it's heat and charged particles. Humans are not directly affected by this, as earth's magnetic field does an excellent job of shielding us from these charged particles. Every now and again though, the sun releases a little more than a little wind in an event called a coronal mass ejection, or CME. During a CME, the sun releases a significant amount of plasma and accompanying magnetic field. This plasma slams into Earth, as indicated in red here. Most CMEs are pretty much harmless, like this one, and unless you're unprotected by Earth's magnetic field, you're probably fine. But Every now and again, the sun releases a MASSIVE CME that overwhelms the Earth's magnetic field and causes problems on Earth. The last one we know about was on September 1st, 1859, and it was observed and recorded by astronomer Richard Carrington. This massive geomagnetic storm, dubbed the Carrington Event, wreaked havoc on electrical systems and telegraphs. Some telegraph operators reported that they could send and receive telegraphs despite being disconnected, which is pretty cool actually. The limited technology in 1859 meant that humanity got off pretty easy, but what if a Carrington level event happened today? Well, it would be bad. <laughs> really bad. Scientists hypothesized that if we experienced today what people in 1859 experienced, we would have a lot more problems on our hands than wacky telegraphs. Satellites would be knocked out of orbit, power grids would shut down, planes would fall out of the sky, trains would crash, and the cooling systems on nuclear power plants would likely stop working, potentially causing radioactive leaks. The world would come to a halt and it would be chaos. If that's not bad enough, some scientists think that the disruption from the CME could cause our nuclear weapons to detonate, which you know, would be bad. Luckily, this is all theoretical, and scientists find it unlikely that something of this magnitude would occur. However, in 2012, the sun released a massive CME, one on par to the Carrington event, one with the potential to cause the destruction I just described. Luckily, it didn't hit us, but we were headed right for it. Had the CME happened just a few days later, well, let's just say the effects wouldn't be so, uh, theoretical. Luckily, Carrington level events are rare, and even if they do happen, they probably won't hit us. So, we might not see a Carrington level event hit us in our lifetime, so you can sleep easy. With that in mind, I don't want you guys to worry about space. Sure, everything is actively trying to kill us, but it's not doing a very good job. At the end of the day, the real threat to humanity is not from space. It's actually on this planet. Tune in next week to find out why the Earth is actually more likely to kill us.
Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please like this video. And if you want to see more content by me, please consider subscribing to my channel. I come out with a new video just about every week, so there's usually something to look forward to. Thanks again for watching, and while you're at it, you should check out the sponsor of this video, National Royalty Group. I'll post a link in the description.